This is Orla FM. A warm welcome to my world, Walker's World on Orla FM. I'm Peter Walker, and we're going on a trip into the weird and wonderful, but true, well, probably true, tales on Walker's World. On my show, we look for the most amazing, often ill-documented, connections involving Polish people across history. Did you know that before Stalin redrew Europe's maps after World War II, Lviv, or in Polish Lwów, now in Ukraine, was a Polish city? Did you know that further back in time there was a Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth encompassing all Ukraine? In fact, in the 14th century, Poland was Europe's biggest country by land mass because of this and it stretched from the Baltic Sea to the north all the way down to modern-day Turkey in the south. Poland and Lithuania formed their first dynastic union in 1386. That means that many Poles have relatives and family connections across the Polish border in Ukraine. So, let's knock on a few doors. Some famous people from that region have contributed to Polish life. Let me tell you their stories. Something of that Polish heritage was covered in some articles written by Jan Leduchowski, published last month in Tydzień Polski, London's Polish weekly newspaper, under the headline Poles and Ukrainians, a love-hate relationship that turned to love. Before we trace the more distant past, let me also tell you about events earlier this century, which bolstered Polish support for Ukraine. The Orange Revolution was a series of protests and political events that took place in Ukraine from November 2004 to January 2005, in the immediate aftermath of the runoff vote of the 2004 Ukrainian presidential election, which was claimed to be marred by massive corruption, voter intimidation and electoral fraud. Back then, the brief victor of the 2004 election was Viktor Yanukovych, a pro-Russian incumbent candidate. His pro-democracy rival who spurred the Orange Revolution was Viktor Yushchenko. So it became a contest between Russia's sphere of influence in the region and a pro-West candidate. Back then, it was Viktor versus Viktor. Sadly, in 2022, it is a different kind of conflict with Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian for Vladimir, pitched against Russia's President Vladimir Putin. So Vlad versus Vlad. Sound familiar? OK, let's go deep now, back in time. Remember I mentioned that at one time Poland was Europe's biggest nation? Well, there were at one time two states, one being Poland and the other being the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The second state encompassed parts of modern-day Belarus and what we now call Ukraine, and its population was known as Rus, and they spoke Ruski. In 1547, Ivan the Terrible, not being especially original, decided to take over the name Rus for Russia. Despite this renaming, when the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was formed in 1569, Kiev was still part of it, although Lwów was regarded as being part of Poland. All that changed in the 18th century when Poland's neighbours decided to carve up the whole region for themselves. Prussia, a forerunner of Germany, took over western Poland, including the Polish north coast of Pomorze or Pomerania and the industrial Schlansk or Silesia. The Austro-Hungarian Empire to the south took over the southern region of Poland, including the city of Krakow or Kraków. It also seized Lwów, or Lviv. The Russian Empire incorporated the area surrounding Warsaw and the rest of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, 
Oh, and Francis Napoleon claimed the Duchy of Warsaw for himself in the 18th century. This is very much a simplification of the various partitions of Poland, which lost its independence and ceased to exist. Poles, under whatever domination, continued to speak Polish and to keep their traditions. They also strived for independence from the three powers. There were revolts and revolutions, notably in 1830 and 1863 against Russian rule. Nothing much changed until the First World War, when each of the occupying powers suffered setbacks. In a nutshell, Prussia, Austria and Russia lost their empires and royal families, either as a direct result of losing the so-called Great War or through political revolution at home. After more than a century, Poland became an independent state. The eastern part of the country included Lwów and other parts of what we now call Western Ukraine. Lwów had been part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, although most of the rest of Ukraine had been part of the Russian Empire. The Second World War changed Poland's borders, but that was only good news for the mapmakers. There were the invasions of Poland in September 1939 by both Nazi Germany and by the Soviet Union. Later, the Soviet Union joined the Allies during the Second World War, and Stalin, the Soviet leader, decided to change the borders once again. Poland was pushed westwards and lost its eastern territory, including Lwów, which became part of the Soviet Union. Many people in those lost territories moved to Poland in its new borders. People in that region often had eventful lives. One of these was Marian Henschelis, who changed his name several times, but became best known as Marian Heimar. As a teenager, he volunteered for the Polish side during the defence of Lwów in the years 1918 and 1919. He studied medicine and philosophy at the local Jan Kazimierz University. He was more interested in the arts and entertainment, so in 1924 a cabaret known as Qui Pro Quo, you'll find it on social media sites such as YouTube, invited him to Warsaw. His speciality was humour, and he, sometimes with others, wrote jokes, sketches and monologues for various cabarets and for Polish radio. He was a poet with a big personality. And he was Jewish, so after the Nazi German occupation of Warsaw in September 1939, he had to flee. The Gestapo were looking for him, so he, like many other Poles, escaped to Romania. After more travels, he eventually signed up for the Polish Independent Carpathian Brigade and he served in the Middle East. During the siege of Tobruk, he set up a field theatre to entertain the troops. After the war, he decided to stay in London, when he continued to entertain, and he broadcast to Poland by means of Radio Free Europe. I came across him in the 1950s, when I, then living in Somerset, listened to a daily Polish-language radio programme broadcast from Lille by French radio. I also heard the song Red Poppies on Monte Cassino, Czerwone Machina Monte Cassino. In 1944, the Polish army was given the task to take Monte Cassino in Italy, which was surrounded by red poppies. According to the song, they became a deeper red, nourished by Polish blood. Felix Konarski, poet, songwriter and cabaret performer, wrote the words, which were set to plaintive music by Alfred Schutz. The song was what we would call today iconic. A British equivalent would be Vera Lynn's White Cliffs of Dover, only more so. That famous 1944 wartime Polish song, Czerwone Machina Monte Cassino, relates to a landmark battle in Italy. Yet the song has Polish-Ukrainian links. The writer of the lyrics, Felix Konarski, came from Ukraine, but not from the western part. Born in Kiev in 1907, he managed to leave the Soviet Union and in 1934 to settle down in Lwów. He took up the stage name Ref Ren and he set up a theatre group. He wrote songs and poems, but then he had the problem of how to survive 
when the city was captured by the Soviet Union in September 1939. He joined a travelling orchestra which played at various places in the Soviet Union. When Nazi Germany invaded, he was in Moscow. He managed to enlist in the Polish army. He established a Polish soldiers' theatre, but after the war he settled in London, where he continued such work. He went on to live in Chicago in the 1960s and he entertained people in Polish communities throughout the USA. Although Felix Kanarski and Marian Heymar are no longer with us, they have left a legacy of songs and words. There is still a small Polish community in Ukraine and there are Polish organisations promoting Polish culture. I'm Peter Walker and next time I will return to the weird and wonderful. Join me again for Walker's World on Aula FM. <laughs>